Welcome to another episode of the Sacred Roots Podcast. I'm quite excited to be um, touching upon this topic today because every woman really is kind of struggling with the witch wound to a certain degree. And I think it was episode 20 of the Sacred Roots Podcast where I introduced to you the three feminine wounds, the witch wound, the bitch wound, and the whore wound. But I've decided I really wanted to dive deeper into those because, I mean, they really deserve it. <laughs> and when they're not healed, they're actually preventing you from stepping into more alignment and purpose. And because I am all about empowering you to have a solid life, solid business, step into alignment, step into your purpose, um, I think it's really important to spend a bit more time talking about this witch wound. I work on it with my clients more in depth, but I want to empower you with the knowledge and some tools as well so that you can start the healing journey yourself. So what is the witch wound and how is it really preventing you from stepping into alignment and purpose? The witch wound is um, that part of yourself that is afraid of sharing all your gifts with the world and mostly afraid of being seen, of being visible, of showing up on social media, of doing a video, talking about certain experiences, expressing your gifts, maybe talking about your psychic gifts, about intuitive hits that you've received because it doesn't feel safe. And I mean, you have the right to think that it doesn't feel safe because for centuries, it really wasn't. It was not safe. Women who do that, they would be persecuted, tortured, burned, killed, and we all hold a certain kind of trauma related to that period, whether it's karmically, transgenerational, um, we're still connected to all that trauma. And so that shows up today in our modern society as us being afraid of expressing our most authentic self. And because we are hiding parts of ourself, and especially parts that we are afraid are going to be judged or that we're going to be rejected if we show them, then we are not fully ourselves. But it is actually these parts that we are the most afraid of sharing that bring us into alignment that bring us into our purpose, that bring us abundance. Because you didn't come here to fit in. You didn't come here to be like everyone else. You came here to be yourself. And no one else can be you. You're the best at being you. And it's easy for you to be you. What is hard is actually to hide parts of yourself and to try to fit in. So if you heal that wound, then you can really give yourself permission to be unapologetically yourself. And that brings you into alignment because that's who your soul desired to be in this lifetime. It's not as if your soul was like, okay, I'm going to be super creative, but I'm not really going to show it in this lifetime because, well, my personality is not going to, me to want me to. No, your soul chose very consciously a lot of characteristics, strengths, flaws, weaknesses that were also going to bring opportunities so that you could fully step into who you came here to be. And as a result of that, what you came here to do. And so the more you express all of your weirdness, all of your too muchness, all of your creative, artistic, bossy, businessy, financial, whatever it is that you're actually really good at, but that you're hiding, the more you express it, the more you're in alignment. All these things that you were told were too much, they are your superpower. All these things that you were criticized for, they are your superpower. You're not like that by coincidence. You've chosen these parts of yourself. And you might be battling with that maybe, or maybe there's fear 
that's part of your journey to heal them so that you can fully, fully show up and share it with the world. And when you share those with the world, well, it's going to bring you fulfillment, ecstatic joy, bliss, and it will also will have taught you to move from a place of radical self-acceptance and self-love, stop caring about other people's judgments, and honor who you are. And you're so magnetic when you move from that place. Um, a little backstory that is actually coming like right to me as I'm telling this, um, as I'm talking about this and of how the witch wound is actually holding us back and really like touching us on a collective level. Um, I've always been someone that is very comfortable in the spotlight. So when I was a kid, my father was writing poems. He, you know, he's creative, quite artistic. And so he loved to write poems and they were lovely poems. I still know them by heart <laughs> because he was teaching these poems to me. And when his friends would come over, I would recite the poems because it was a great practice for me to be comfortable in front of other people. He loved to do theater and he thought it was very important to be eloquent to be able to speak nicely. And I really have to thank him for that because it's probably thanks to him that I'm now doing this podcast and showing up with so much comfort on social media. And so I always had something for the spotlight, going on stage, theater. I did a lot of theater in my life, like eight pieces or something. And when I was 20, uh, I, when I went to university, I went to Lichek, which is a university in Brussels. I was learning business management there was a kind of like beauty contest and not that I think I'm a queen of beauty even though I think I have my own beauty and a lot of charm and a beautiful smile and I quite love my my features and my body um, I thought maybe it could be fun because for me it's theater and if you participated in the contest you would have dance classes because we were going to dance of course on stage so we were going to have dance classes every week and like prepare a whole show basically to then select the queen of the university, the beauty queen of the university. And while I really did not take myself seriously from like the beauty side of things, uh, especially at that time, I had a lot of eating disorders and I was not in love with myself like I am now. Um, but I love the idea of just like having dance classes for free and getting to receive lingerie for free and, you know, all of these things. And so I participated in that contest and I was really doing it lightly, not taking myself seriously. I thought it was really fun. And on the day of the show, I almost won the like Miss Public Award because I was playing so much on the, on the stage. People could see I was not taking myself seriously compared to the other girls who had like those serious faces and were really trying to be so beautiful. <laughs> and so, but in the end, I did not want, it's another beautiful blonde girl with like curly hair who won the Miss Public. But at the end of the show, I had some friends who were there and one of my friends, um, a few months later, we actually got into a huge argument because she said to me, I don't understand how you could participate in that contest and think it was okay for you to just go and dance on stage and pretend you were going to win. And that is how our collective is affected by the witch wound because the witch wound is creating competition, jealousy, uh, mistrust amongst women. Because when one woman is visible and comfortable being in the spotlight, it triggers another woman who herself is not comfortable being in the spotlight or herself craving to be more in the spotlight and needing more attention because of her own trauma. And that comes really from those times where if you are betraying your mother or your sister and going to see the patriarchy to say, my sister is a healer, she's a herbalist, she's a medium, she's a psychic, like we're talking about pretty AKA normal things, like they're completely accepted now, these professions, but at the time they weren't, at the time of like the witch hunts. 
um, if you are going to see the people in charge, the men, obviously, that this woman was practicing something that was legal because it was made illegal at the time, uh, you would save your own skin, but that person would then be tortured or killed because they were afraid of women in their power. So of course, now we're afraid of being in our power as well. And even when you dare to step into your power, to have fun, to go on stage, to like just dance in front of your friends because you think it's fun. And that was really genuinely what I thought. I had a lot of fun because I love theater. That's just who I am. Um, other women and some of your best friends are going to criticize you for it and put you down for it. And that is the modern, modern betrayal. Of course, after some time, it was all good and we became best friends again. But um, this is really a story to show you how deep this wound is in the collective. I would love to know. I'm sure that you also have stories like that where you were in your light or you expressed something and people made fun of you. Another way that this wound is... Um, visible in the collective is that um, it's when you talk about your spiritual experiences. Those are really pushed down and not always accepted. I have 10 other stories about that, <laughs> but I'm not going to like spend a whole podcast sharing all my stories. Um, I want to like empower you with like more knowledge, but it's happened to me a lot of times where I would share about ghost encounters that I had, spirits that I saw, and people would make fun of me. And so then you stop talking about it, and then you shut it down. You don't want to say that you channel light language. You don't want to say that you can see the dead. You don't want to say that you're um, a guide passer and that you help souls go to the other side when they are lost and don't find the light. You're afraid of talking about these things because you're afraid of being rejected. And we have to understand that it's not been so long that the witchcraft acts have been, have been lifted because it was really illegal to do these things. In my book, The Path of Femininity, um, in one of, I think it's one of the first chapters, maybe in chapter one, um, I talk about Helen Duncan, and she is considered to be the last woman to have been convicted under the witchcraft, witchcraft act. Damn, that's a hard word to pronounce for me, <laughs> for me and my French accent. So what happened is that she supposedly um, contacted a spirit that was a sailor of the HMS Barham. And that boat was known by the military. And it's a boat that had sunk during World War II, but the military had hidden the, the sinking of that boat from the public. And so for like certain reasons, because it was like linked to D-Day and ending the war and all these things. And so they kept it secret. And when they found out through, I don't know what way, that she had potentially connected with a spirit of that boat, they were really afraid that she was going to tell certain things that the spirit might have told her and that she was going to mess up the day that ended the war, World War II. And so she was put in jail for nine months because of that. It's pretty crazy, right? So that was 1944, not even 100 years ago. And if you go and have a look at other countries, there's been some uh, witchcraft acts that were actually in place until 2016. That is the latest. It happened in South Africa. There's been an investigation. It took years. But in 2016, they finally decided to lift it. So now it's not illegal to be a psychic anymore in the world, to be a healer, to be a herbalist, to be a midwife. But this is still very present in the society because if you are in your light, if you talk about spiritual gifts that you have or just you share all of yourself and you're unapologetically yourself, it is going to be criticized. And there's this whole like cancel culture. 
So I'm really, I'm really here on like, I don't know what's the right word, like a mission, I would say, to help the witch inside of you heal and step into her power. Because a witch, really, what is it? It's a woman in her power. It's a woman that is expressing her gifts, whatever your gifts are. It's a woman that is comfortable being visible and comfortable showing up. A witch is a woman that is connected to her womb, to her soul. She knows deep down that she's a channel, that her gifts and her creative expression and all these things are actually coming from source and they are flowing through her. I mean, most of this book that I wrote, it, it didn't come from me. I was writing it and I was amazed at what I was writing. It came through me because I allowed it to. Also, I was pregnant, so you're always super psychic when you're pregnant, at least much more psychic. And I'm quite psychic to start with. So <laughs> when you're pregnant, woo, it was really fun. It was multiplied by three at least. And so you're very connected to your womb because you know that your womb is the, the seed of your creativity, the seed of your power, which also leads us to the whore wound. And I'm going to be talking about in the next episode because I'm going to be doing these three episodes, which wound, which wound horror wound. I really want to dive deep into them. But um, a witch basically is a woman in her power that is not afraid to share her gifts with the world and to be visible. And she is working hand in hand with spirit for herself and for the world. She's also very connected to nature. She understands the spiritual laws. She understands how the universe talks to her. And she's very tapped in and very connected to nature and to source. And that woman is somewhere inside of you. That woman that is expressing, that is desiring to express all of her gifts, all of her weirdness, all of her authenticity, that is not afraid of being visible and being seen, and all of, you, all of you being seen, she's there inside of you and she's waiting for you to wake up. And the day you allow her to shine through and you let go of the fear that is holding you back right now, that is the day that you're going to be experiencing so much abundance, so much prosperity and really connect with your true purpose. Because your purpose we have a misconception that our purpose is what we came here to do. No. Your purpose is who you came here to be. We are human beings, not human doings. We came here to evolve, to be a certain person. And then what we're going to do with our being is just a natural result of that. And we have a lot of options and a lot of flexibility around that. But who we are being matters much more than what we're doing. Much, much more. And so if you can allow yourself to be all of yourself, then you're stepping into your purpose. And so I have a few questions for you here if you really want to, to start healing that witch wound. And the first question I would want you to sit with, maybe you can grab a pen or if you're going for a walk or if you're in the car, keep driving. <laughs> but maybe you can write it on your phone and journal on it later tonight, light on a candle. Um, there are three questions that I really want you to, <clears throat> to sit with. The first is, what are you afraid would happen if people saw the real you, just be very honest with yourself and connect with the fear. What is that actual fear that is holding you back? Is it fear of being killed? Because usually deep down, it always comes down to the fear of death, but maybe it's like pretty obvious for you right now. Maybe it's just a fear of being rejected. Maybe it's a fear of not being loved. Maybe it's a fear of losing some of your friends, not belonging to the pack, not fitting in. What is the real fear? Because it's going to be a bit different for everyone, depending on the traumas, the wounds that you have and what your soul came here to heal. And so the first step is to really have clarity on what that fear is.
once you have identified that fear, I would invite you to um, actually do the meditation that I have shared in episode, I think it was 38 or 39, how to connect with your soul desires. At the end of that episode, I do a meditation to really help you connect with your ego and calm your ego and calm the fear from your ego. And you can absolutely use that same meditation to let go of any kind of fear. It's a really powerful visualization. And so once you have identified that fear, you can do that exercise to really let go of the fear. Because fear is just a sign that there is expansion on the other side. As I'm sure you know, fear comes from your ego and it feels very real when you're in the fear. It's, it's terrifying and you're in fight or flight or you're freezing, it's very uncomfortable. But if you breathe through it and you allow your nervous system to calm down, because when you're in fear, like your emotional, your neocortex isn't functioning. So you cannot think properly. So you have to like calm yourself, get through the emotion, feel it, get away from it. After that, once you felt it, once you've gone through it and you can really remind yourself, remind your conscious self that fear is just a sign that there is expansion on the other side. It is just your ego that wants to keep you safe. But in today's society, you are safe. Being your most unapologetic self is your power. And it's by being in your power that you're safe. It's not by hiding. Hiding is not going to keep you safe today. This is not going to work anymore. It's quite the opposite. Hiding is just going to make you feel terrible, miserable, and it's just going to allow other people to abuse you. But if you step into your power and you're unapologetically yourself and you go on that journey of really loving and healing yourself, that becomes your power. That becomes your protection. Love is the protection. Being in your power is the protection, not hiding. And so it's important to go through the fear, to let go of the fear so that you can then follow the expansion that your soul wants you to move towards. Fear is just an invitation to grow a bit more, to expand a bit more. And that's exactly what you came here to do. My second question then would be, what are you most afraid to share, talk about, show about yourself? I asked that question to um, a workshop that I did recently, and it was beautiful because one of the girls said, I'm afraid to share that I channel light language and that I'm super tapped in. Quite often, we are afraid of sharing these spiritual bit woo-woo things. And then it was so beautiful because she did it. And then I was like, how are you feeling now? I was like, oh, actually, I'm realizing that I'm not dead. Uh, I haven't been rejected. Like, it's fine. I'm in a safe container. And I can talk about these things. And so because she did it, and the event was positive, she slowly started to let go of her fear. And what was beautiful is that other girls then started to say, oh, I am actually psychic, but I never dared to talk about it. Oh, I actually see this. Oh, I see auras. And then they all started sharing. And so what she realized that girl that shared about channeling light language was that because she dared to express herself and to talk about her fear, she gave permission to others to step up as well. When you heal the witch wound and you share your most authentic self, you're showing others the way. You're paving the way for others to do the same. You're giving permission to your sisters to be their most authentic self as well. When you heal, everybody heals. When you rise, everybody rises. I have full body chills when I'm saying that because I truly believe it. And this is why it's so important that we all step up, that we all get over the fear, that we all talk about our weirdness, that we all do the thing that we're actually afraid of because that is what our soul wants us to expand into.
And by doing that, you're going to be the most fulfilled, the most abundant, the most in alignment. And that's what you came here to experience. And the third question you can sit with is, if you knew you were safe and loved, what would you do, show, share, or express? Know that the other, I don't know, three, 300, 500 women that are going to listen to this podcast episode, they are rooting for you. Like I am rooting for you right now. I want you to show up and the three other women that you don't know, but that have their earpods also in their ear and they're listening to, the, to this podcast, they also want you to show up. We all want to show up and we're all rooting for each other because that's how we're all healing and showing each other the way. And it is not because one person is in the spotlight that the others have less light. It's quite the opposite. When one person is the light, it creates even more light for others. We're multiplying the amount of light. And we need that right now in this chaotic world. So please, please, please sit with these questions. Don't take them lightly. Don't let this be just another podcast episode that you're listening to. And then you're going back to your everyday chores, chores and your business. Take the time today or tomorrow to sit with these questions, to do the meditation, to face the fear and to do it anyway. You're going to thank yourself for doing that. I promise. You're going to thank yourself for doing that. And it is going to shift you and bring you back to your power day after day. One last little trick that I want to share with you in order to share this, this witch wound is to connect with your throat. Because the witch wound is located in the throat chakra. Each of these wounds are connected to one of our chakras, like most of our wounds and traumas. And the witch wound is really, um, I mean, you could also say it's in the sacral, but for me, it's really in the throat chakra because it's about expressing yourself, showing your most authentic self and really going through that journey of loving yourself and the throat and the heart are always very connected so that you can show all of who you are and not want to hide anymore. Love yourself so much that you don't want to compromise and hide and let the fear win over. And so how do you work on the throat chakra? The throat chakra, um, the color of the throat chakra is blue. So you can wear a blue scarf or you can also repeat the mantra hum. Every chakra is responding to a mantra. And so you can really sit in meditation and just repeat in silence or out loud hum, hum, hum. And you can visualize your throat chakra, the vortex of your throat being cleared with blue light that is coming from the sky and coming from the earth and really cleansing you so that you can energetically release the fear. And probably the karmic lives where you were hanged for being yourself. And um, yeah, so for me personally, like every time that I am sick, maybe you can hear it, my, low, my voice is a bit lower than usual today because my husband and my babies are sick. And every time I can get like a little bit sensitive to microbes or anything, it's my throat that is, um, that is starting to be a bit painful because I know that I was hanged in a past life and I was born with the umbilical cord around my throat. So I have a lot, I did a lot of healing around that. And that's why I can talk about it these days and empower you to heal that witch wound as well. It's so important. All right, my darling, I'm going to leave you with it. I think this was a lot of information, uh, more than information. I think it was an activation for you. I hope I have activated you to step into your power, into your an apologetic self into your gifts, into alignment. And I cannot wait to see what comes out of this. Oh, my screen just like flickered. <laughs> it's a 
so much energy going on here. Um, let me know what this episode has brought to you. You can tag me on Instagram with like your biggest insight or send me a DM or send me an email if you want to, don't want to do that uh, in public, that's fine. But I'm so happy and excited every time you share that with me. Um, I'll see you in next week's episode where I'm going to talk about the bitch wound and then the week after about the whore wound. And um, I'm sending you all my love. <laughs>